Florida Supercon. Yo, what's up, Florida Supercon? <laughs> Beast Boy in the house. Wingman G in the house. I'm Greg Sipes, and I love you all. What's, hap <laughs> what's happening? It's good to be back in Florida, my hometown. This is Fort Lauderdale, the Broward County Convention Center. Yep. Here you are. You're not out there as a fan. You're actually here now as a celebrity. So what is it like being here and coming back down to South Florida and being part of all this? It's really, uh, you know, I feel like I'm dreaming awake. It's a dream come true to, you know, Florida kind of gave me everything that I am now. It's, it nurtured me. It was my, um, the, such fertile ground for me. My family really supported me as an actor and a junior professional surfer. And just ever since I was a baby, my, my parents have always kind of inspired me to, to get into, you know, stay in acting and um, audition and drive me to Miami for, from Coral Springs, Florida, which is where I spent most of my time. So it's just, it's just awesome. Florida's given me so much, so it's great to be back here. I'm a fan as well. <laughs> <laughs> now some of the things you've done, reading that Mike, Michelangelo and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you were in Beast Boy and Teen Titans. That's right. And Teen Titans Go. Mm -hmm. You also were a part of the Fast and Furious. Yep. The Middle, TV show The Middle, very funny and all. Anger Management with Charlie Sheen. Yep. Deadwood, True Blood. What has this whole experience so far been like for you to be a part of some of the voice acting and also acting? The whole experience of being a part of over, I think I've been in over 130 productions now. Uh, movies, television shows, uh, cartoons. It's just kind of very um, surreal uh, in, a, in a way that it's kind of better than what I, I could have imagined. And I still feel like I'm just starting. I'm starting to create my own television shows, my own animated series, movies. I'm producing. I just sold my first show to DreamWorks. Um, it's just really fun to kind of now not only be in other people's productions, but also create my own shows, my own movies that I can star in and, and write roles that I want to play and that I haven't been able to play yet. You mentioned Coral Springs, so you're from Coral Springs, went to Coral Springs High School. I, to, I like the way you're wearing the green and the blue. I don't know if you did that on purpose oh to represent gosh, story yeah, of the Coral Springs, Coral Springs High School the Colts. Colts colors. Look at That's that. I got exactly the blue right. socks too. Very nice. You know, think, I don't think about things. I actually try to be a nowist and not think about anything. And what happens, everything just kind of divinely aligns itself. So look, Wingman's even got it going. <laughs> Coral Springs Colts colors. That's so cool. Learn the pride. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, green and blue are my favorite colors. Although I, oh, thanks, Winged D. <laughs> Wingman's too. He's the real life Beast Boy. So when you're younger and you're in high school and all, what shows, what do you like watching? What did you enjoy, whether it be acting or just voice acting as well? Well, I, I enjoyed watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That was my favorite cartoon. So now to play Michelangelo in the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series on Nickelodeon has been really special. Um, and I grew up in musical theater and doing plays and it, it, I just, it's just fun. It's just fun to have the opportunity to, to, to play roles that I've kind of, I've been a fan of my whole life. To have an opportunity to play roles like, I, I kind of, I haven't got the shot yet, but I want to play Mickey Mouse. I grew up in Disney World. Disney World was a big part of my life. I grew up uh, in a big family, nine brothers and sisters, and my dad right there, there he is. Hey dad. Hey. Big sports guy. Big sports guy. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. We gotta get closer to the fans. We're live right now. There's my dad, everybody. Um, yeah, so we grew up in Disney World. I, I went there probably, a, no lie, I don't know, 500 to 1,000 times. He would show up with my nine brothers and sisters and just let us go free. So at Disney World was a big inspiration in my life. And I, I've always wanted to play Mickey Mouse, so maybe one day, ha ha, ha ha, yeah, I'm gonna play the cool Mickey Mouse. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. That's great. <laughs> How did you know that you could do voices? How young were you when you started doing well, it voices? It started again with my, my family supporting me and kind of inspiring me to get into acting. But voice acting, I think, really started. My dad would drive us around in the camper. And if you all know what a CB radio is, it's what you talk to the truck drivers with. I would get on the, the CB radio and mess with truck drivers with different voices. And my dad's like, one day you're going to do cartoons. And, and then it happened. But, you know, we drive around the, the United States going to sports events, you know, base, I've been to hundreds of baseball games and football games and that was what my dad loved to do is take us all to sporting events and Disney World and theme parks across the United States. So it was really fun and, and wrestling. Oh. I grew up going to the WWF uh, matches and I watched The Rock a whole bunch. Um, Oh, we're gonna get into I mean, a little bit of that. Old school wrestlers, though, <laughs> before you all were born. <laughs> so, 
when you guys were going driving around in the camper just what was that like and what for you what were some of the sporting events that you enjoyed going to one of my fondest memories was I think we were in New Jersey or New York and the first ever Nintendo console came out Nintendo didn't exist yet Nintendo just came out and my dad bought the Nintendo game console for us to play and he hooked it up in the camper so just a, you know just being able to play video games in a camper uh, was so cool um, that was one of my f fondest memories as a little boy in the camper playing Nintendo driving around and play Mike Tyson punch out I remember that um, yeah you were in surfing that was yeah, huge yeah. for you so you're going on all these trips but then you start taking a surfing, going down to Deerfield Beach, where a lot of surfing was going on and all. How close were you to really becoming like a professional surfer? And could you make a career out of surfing? See, the thing is, I feel like I could have continued on with my surfing career. I became third in the US, junior pro surfer, and it all it's all because of Florida. It made me a very hungry, passionate surfer. Sometimes my dad would drive me to the beach when there would be uh, maybe five minutes left of light, because I lived in Coral Springs, which is kind of a 30 minute drive to the beach, so after middle school, my dad would be like, all right, you wanna go surfing? He'd be kind enough to drive me with maybe you know 10 minutes of light left so I could catch one wave. And sometimes the waves were like this big. So I would sometimes just wait all day at the beach too. He would drop me off at six in the morning on the weekends and it'd be flat and I would pray for some wind and a little wave would come and I'd grab my board and run out there and, and try to catch a wave. So it made me really a, a hungry surfer. And when I got the opportunity to surf waves in California and started to compete, when I'd get bigger waves, it, it made me a really good surfer. Similar, I mean, by, by no means am I nearly as good as Kelly Slater, but another, the, you know, 10 times or 15 times world champion pro surfers from Florida, Kelly Slater. And I think that also made him a great surfer, you know, making him a hungry surfer, um, sur serving the small waves of Florida. They used to be able to milk every wave. <laughs> well, the acting career took off. Yeah. And was it hard then? Well, you, had, you loved surfing and you loved doing what you're doing yeah. but was it hard that you had to put surfing sort of like on the back burner oh, because so you, the acting career yeah at, at a certain point I had to decide did I want to continue competing as a surfer or did I wanted to did I want to go into acting and I felt like I could surf the rest of my life and I wanted to basically make a difference with my my art and uh, thanks wingman and I decided <laughs> To leave. Wingman's happy you yeah, did. <laughs> yeah. I decided to leave Florida and uh, you know decide I could serve the rest of my life and just enjoy it and uh, focus on my acting and directing career. And I moved to and I moved to LA and I went to UCLA for about two weeks for directing and I got lucky enough to get a big agent and I auditioned um, and I, I never stopped working from like maybe the first month I I moved to LA and I never looked back. <laughs>